connecting the cloud server. Recording. Good day, everybody out there in the Never Never Land. I'd like to welcome you to the Coming Home to You Network. And I have a, a, a wonderful young entrepreneur called Mr. Whiskey. And he's going to tell you a bit about himself. And uh, I believe he's, he's, uh, he's involved in a lot of very interesting things. So, Mr. Whiskey, it's off to you. Floor is yours. Awesome. Well, thank you for having me. And yeah, definitely a good morning, to everyone out there. I hope you all have a, a blessed day today. You know, it's always a gift to be alive. And like you said, I'm a young entrepreneur. You know, I I, I just use that to bottle everything together. Uh, otherwise, it's a little bit of a list. So I'm a veteran. And from that, I'm also an actor, an author, a voice actor, a comedian, a preacher, a speaker, and then sometimes a model, not often. And then a founder of two podcasts. So to bundle that all up as entrepreneur makes it a little bit easier. You know, I do have my own company, which is Couple of Nukes. And for now, it's just the podcast as well as all my other stuff bundled into that. But I do plan on selling different products, creating my own uh, alcohol line, my own honey line, and some other services. Hopefully, eventually opening up a type of facility that could help mentor young adults, especially in the military, and just having some some way of connecting with them outside of their traditional means with medical and military side and civilian side. So as far as the podcast, Couple of Nukes, it's military mental health, it's comedy and life advice, but it's really for everyone. So everything we cover, I mean, whether you're in the military or not, the financial stuff, the dating advice, the real estate the self-discovery, all of that applies to everyone. I just try to lock in on young adults in the military or especially those who are transitioning to the civilian world. It can be quite the transition. I just want to help them out. And I also highlight plenty of civilians who are who own their own shows, who have their own companies that could be beneficial to them or that I just find interesting, you know, especially... I also like to do first responders. They have a lot in common with our service members, especially on those more serious topics we talk about, including anxiety, depression, PTSD, suicide, addiction to alcohol and drugs and sex and all that stuff. And we do get into that quite a bit just because it's a huge issue, not only in the branch I served in the United States Navy, but across all the branches and first responder side. You know, the mortality rate after retirement is very high. The making it to retirement rate isn't as high, you know, and the retention in the military is, uh, you know, I won't say it's an all time low because I don't have the numbers on me, but it's very low. The retention, people staying in and the recruiting, all super, super low. And so we highlight that on my show and we talk about the good improvements we've seen with the military as of late or over the past years and the not so good. So it's, I, and, and we do have comedy, so we do keep it lighthearted too with funny stories about there are good things in the military, you know, what do we get into in other countries or here in home port with our time off and stuff like that. So I kind of highlight the community. Uh, I do have a lot of non-military people on there though, because they're just a lot more available, <laughs> you know, military people are usually busy. So that's what I do with a couple of nukes. Yeah. And of course you, 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 You've put on you hit on a lot of interesting things there too, regarding people helping people transition from from the military to to home life. Uh, that's got to be extremely difficult coming from from one engagement to to the next, and and how important that is. Uh, we hear more and more how a lot of the time people coming back from different theaters across the world are sort of left to their own devices, and and to without having that support there. So I mean. Fair play to you know for uh, for being aware of that and for for giving people a platform somewhere where they can you know talk about their issues and, and get the help that they need. So important. You also mentioned too that you, you're you're an actor. And now is there is there any anything in uh, that you've been in that we might recognize? <laughs> no, no, I'm not at that level yet. I've decided okay. just this in the past few months, really this past year, to try acting because I said you know I'm always on shows speaking and i have a lot of connections in that industry that i've met through podcasting there's a lot of filmmakers and podcasters who 
our actors or actresses or have those connections. So I'm scheduled for a few things here. And the voice acting is, you know, it's also it requires you to put a bit of money into it. And right now I'm really focusing on my show, you know, a couple of news and my other show, Radiating Faith. That's what I want to focus on right now. That stuff is kind of I just do small gigs here and there for the time being, just whatever I can get. Uh, because, you know, there's plenty of websites and stuff out there. But, uh, you know, I'm just a free member. I'm not a premium member. So I get a smaller amount of auditions and this and that. And it's also just time and traveling. A lot of the gigs that I get offered are in L.A. And I'm here on the East Coast. And uh, it's not always easy for me to just drop everything and go be in L.A. for a while, sometimes a long while. And yeah, so yeah. I'm just waiting to get to the point where my show is all set up nice and perfect. And, you know, I can be like, hey, let's go to L.A. for a couple of weeks, film a couple of things. Uh, I do yeah. have a few things scheduled for the future. And those were, you know, planned out ahead of time. And, you know, once they're out, you'll find them on my website, you know, because on my website, I have every episode of my show, every guest who's been on my show. And then I have everything about me, including my voice acting gigs that I've done. I'm going to have everything that I've appeared in because right now I have a list of every show I've appeared on or podcast. And I'm going to have all my acting stuff on one page as well once it's more significant. So definitely something I'm working on, but like I said, my time and energy right now is really focusing on a couple of nukes and radiating faith. And of course, the, the acting, of course, will be the next logical choice. But for what you're doing in the meantime, uh, giving so so much help and so much benefit to to others, um, it's very admirable and, and and fair play to you. It, it's something like you said, it's very needed out there, and I think the more and more people that become aware of it and and open up to help and open up to receiving and say, yeah, I, I, I need help. It, it, as, especially right. as a male, often we think, oh, no, I can do this by myself. I can get through this. I don't need anybody. I don't need any help. And really, we do. And and even if it's just a platform where we can sit down and talk to others about their experience right. and, and what it was like for them, that in itself can be can be so beneficial. And and to be, for you to create that space for them, I think, yeah, that's uh, yeah, top dollar for that. Very good. And thank you. And I, I, you know, there's a lot of platforms just like mine. But like I was saying the other day on an event I was at, you know, we're not going to connect with everyone. And so having no. as many platforms available, you know, a, a group of soldiers might feel good with me and not good with one of these other platforms out there. So it's just there's so many people in the world. I mean, there's there's billions of us in the world. Right. And so just having as many platforms, different styles or whatever way that way we can help as many people as possible that's I, I think that's one of the beautiful things about the podcasting industry if you have a certain topic that you're really interested in and you don't like this particular host well, hopefully you can find three or four different options and try that out and it also allows us uh, on the creative side to meet so many like-minded people and help each other out with our endeavors you know and I've seen that with the the Facebook groups you know all these different groups collaborating and sending yes. uh you know guests and people each other's ways is awesome yeah and, and i i think i've i've always felt this for a long time that you know in life it's not just about me 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 but it's about collaborating with other people and by doing that it it, it takes what we have and it multiplies by two or by three or by four or whatever the case may be because we have an idea, but when somebody when we share it with somebody, they can they can take that idea and say, Oh yeah, what about this? And we can put in this and put in that. And then all of a sudden you've got you've got like a movement even. Uh and right. Says, yeah, I sincerely believe that it's all about collaborating with others and, and making it better for everybody. Uh, when we try to do things by ourselves, sometimes it works, but a lot of the time it'll it'll, it'll gonna fall by the wayside. We need to have the help from others and and to to collaborate with others. And it it that helps us to stay on track and, um, uh, you know, to to stay motivated and to stay stay connected with what it is that truly matters to us. You know, right? Yeah, staying to know, and you know, it's it's helped me a lot with radiating faith. So that's my other podcast, and you know, as I grow more and more religious each day, I was like, you know what? I have a podcast. I have this set up. You know, how can I be a believer and not be using all of this to spread the word? Yeah. You know, that's 
my duty. And so I created Radiating Faith and I was a little unsure about it. I was like, you know, God, am, am I qualified? And, uh, you know, I think I'm somewhat qualified now, but, you know, each episode sometimes is a little rough. And I was thinking to myself, well, you know what, just like I said, you know, there, there may be a hundred pastors out there and religious speakers doing the same thing, but it might just be the way I connect with someone. And yeah. in, in this case, it might be, you know, saving someone's life, really changing their life. And so I, uh, I'm using that to reassure myself as I try to figure out my, my sermon and preaching style, you know, cause I like all the people I like and all the religious speakers I listen to, but I'm nothing at all like them. So trying to find my own voice in, in that medium. So radiating faith, it's only about going on two and a half, three months old now and trying to figure out and trying to make sure I'm accurate that, you know, religion is one of those things. I don't want to say anything wrong. <laughs> you know, that is no. one of the things where you want to say the right thing. So I've been trying to do my research and trying to make time to have time to do research. You know, I'm, I'm very busy. I get all these different things going on, you know, and um, I think I mentioned, I'm also, you know, a comedian. I've got three shows coming up here in August and trying to, prepare everything for that and see what else is going on so You're busy, yeah, i'm man. trying to publish four books this year so always got something going on yeah yeah and you, you know of course now we again go back to one collaboration the, the the main person or entity if you like that we need to collaborate with is with the good lord himself you know and right and when, we bring, when we bring god into our work it it, it brings it onto a whole new level uh, you know, faith is, we need to have faith, we need to have faith in ourselves and faith in the divine creator created us, put us down in, in this world, in this situation for, for a reason and that we have something to offer. I mean, Jesus himself right. dealt with from the lowly to the highest, you know, there was no distinction between the beggar on the street and the the, the tax collector. Everybody, everybody has, has, um, has value and to to know that, I, I suppose, when you start questioning yourself and, and to say, what qualifies me to talk about God or to talk about my faith? And the fact that you question it, that's the validation right there. Because it, it, it is a very unique experience and it, it's, it'll be unique for you. It'll be different for me. It'll be different for somebody else. And we can only talk about me and my God, and my faith. And, and and how it works for me and and how I get benefit from it and comfort and and uh, you know that, that that's been authentic and that's that's the only place that we can come from. I know there's a, there's a lot of I I don't want to be downgrading anybody, but there's a lot of people who who speak who speak from a book but not from the heart, you know. So mm. it goes over people and and people right people can feel that you know. And it's when you're being authentic. For fundamentally, it's all about love, because love is the thing that's going to bring us together, and love is that's going right. to help us to, to conquer the divide. And I think as long as you're coming from love, from the heart, eh, eh, only good can happen. Right, I agree, and, and you know, a lot of people, especially in the religious communities, come with fear of the law first, yeah. and and then yeah. love later. And I think. You need to do that soft approach with the love first and, and then, yeah. you know, explain everything else afterward. <laughs> I on, think that's what right we on. need. That's it. Yeah. And, and leave with love. Leave with love, you know, and, and it's uh, so simple. You know, I mean, it's the first thing that Jesus says to us, love one another, you know. And, and, right. And that was simple. But I suppose a lot of people took that and, and sort of bastardized things and, and put us under control. And like you said, use the fear. To keep us in check and, right. and for, um, to keep us in control, where really, you know, my God is one of love, love and compassion. Right. You know, so there, there, there's no place there for fear and for hate and for for discord. Uh, it's all about love. And once we can stay in that energy, you know, for sure we're going to swing off every once in a while. You know, but we we come right. back again. And and. Uh, you know, forgive ourselves when we when we transgress and when we go up because that's part of being human. We're, we're all human, you know, and we've got there's a, there's a multitude of experiences that we can experience, and we all get angry once in a while or or get sad or whatever the case may be. But you know, we we 
catch ourselves on and pick ourselves right. up and and then um, you know get back on track again you know but you're yourself what's motivated you now to be i mean you 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 you've got so much going on there between the books the the comedy the your right. uh, your podcast and all the rest taking of care of my dog or, or <laughs> what's what's the driving force there well, you know, that's a that's a good question. So how I ended up becoming a, a podcaster full time and all that was actually a, a conversation with God. You know, I've reviewed it on a couple of different shows I was on. And basically, I was in a blue collar industry and I had very toxic leadership going on at the time. And, you know, I was thinking of quitting and I got this email from Buzzsprout, which is the platform through which I distribute on my podcast. And they were like, hey, we are handpicking a few candidates to go to PodFest. We're going to pay for them. And I said, you know, God, I don't, the podcasting is just like a hobby. And, you know, I'm only just starting to develop it. But if you send me to PodFest and, and things go a certain way, I think this is a, a calling you might have for me. And a few days later, I got the email. You've been picked. We're sending you to PodFest. And I went and it was a life changing event for me. You know, I, it was 3,000 people, and I met so many interesting podcasters, actors, authors, entrepreneurs. I met I met more people in, in, in a day there than, like, my whole life because I grew up in a very sheltered home, and I wasn't really allowed to socialize or leave or have friends and this and that. And then my only experience after that was the military, which is its own, uh, own experience. It's its own experience yeah. when it comes to socialization and who you're you're in contact with. And so I get to PodFest and it's like, boom, 3,000 people. Even the job I was working at in the civilian world, we had like maybe at max 20 people on site. And I, mm -hmm. I worked in a uh, two-partner crew, uh, one supervisor, one partner. So it's like always been in a small, you know, little group. And then boom, 3,000 people. And uh, part of what kept me motivated was, was their energy too. It's like, look how passionate everyone is. And also that, that desire to see, seeing how successful they are. It's like how many lives they're changing and reaching. It's like, well, I want to reach that many people too. I want to help that many people too. I want to collaborate with that many people too. And so I had ended up quitting that job in the blue collar industry and started podcasting full time. And God has helped sustain me since then. And, you know, I enjoy, I've always loved helping other people and talking and meeting other people which is, is ironic growing up as the way I was, I, I would have expected to be introverted. Um, and I don't know if it's because of the suppression and oppression in my family household that it made me desire, you know, being extroverted. It's like, you know, I was never allowed to have that. Now let's talk to as many people as we can. I think sometimes it goes the opposite way where you're scared of the world. Uh, me, I guess, you know, with God behind me, I got thrust into the world and went to these big social events. And so I've, I've, I've stayed motivated. It's definitely time consuming running the two shows, going on all these events, sometimes having six interviews a day, uh, every day, you know, working on this and that. And it's like, you know, I, I really want to focus on my book and get that out, but I really want to, you know, be on these shows and I, I want to do this and that, but I know that God has a timing for everything and, and religion yeah has been one of the biggest motivating factors in, in my life in general, uh, especially in the military. There was a lot of dark times where, you know, I wouldn't be here if I wasn't religious. You know, it helped me get through a lot, even, you know, and and I was a lot less religious than I am now. And it just helped me, um, even if it was just fear of fear of God, it, it did keep me alive. And now I've come to a place where I understand a lot of things more. And looking back every day, that I grow older, it, there's more stuff that I can look back on and see all the connections. Uh, so it's always great that as I get older, my faith only grows and grows just by what I can see being connected, let alone my faith, it, you know, just because I believe. And so, I mean, I, I love what I do, which I think is part of the reason why I found it hard to be motivated in the blue collar industry. That was never just work I enjoyed. Uh, it's great work. You know, and it's crazy to think that less and less people are going to trade school when the the money is huge. You know, I, I mean, I was getting paid nice. It's it's long hours. It's rough jobs. It's rough manual labor. You know, it's, so I, I understand why people don't enjoy it. I personally 
didn't enjoy it. I've always been a creative person ever since I was young. The first six books I published, I was 14. Uh, so I've always, you know, been been creative. And I, I think everyone's a creator. Like God made us in his image and I, he gave us the ability to create. And not everyone is an artist. Maybe maybe you're a musician. Maybe you're a podcaster. Maybe, yeah. you know, you're a sculptor. Whatever it is, we all have some kind of artistic talent, I believe. You know, I meet plenty of people. Oh, I, I can't do anything. I can't draw. I can't sing. I can't dance. I can't do anything creative. I'm just a manual labor guy. No, there's something there. You know, you just haven't discovered it yet you know I, I and I believe in the right place in time you will I know for me it was like I never knew I was a writer until in either seventh or eighth grade we got this prompt in English class and they're like hey write the opening hook of a book and I just wrote a little something that I was like okay this will you know set up a storyline and catch the readers and then I went home with it and uh, I came back uh, 70 pages I was like you know what I think we're gonna make this into a book and then I ended up taking a break from that I was like this is gonna be a big book I want to work on something smaller took a break from that started working on this religious fiction that ended up being so long that I'm like I'm gonna take a break from this with a short book and then that became the six book series that um I published that is now uh, expected to be a 12 book series so I, I had the habit of <laughs> trying to take a break from something big and then it ends up being something bigger. And it's like, even with my, that six book series, like I had expected one book and um, then it was six. And it's like, I don't know where this stuff comes from. God is always just placing stuff in my life or in my heart. So I never even knew I was a writer until, uh, you know, things were set up for me to discover that, you know, because if it wasn't for that prompt, I probably would have never thought like, you know what, I want to write a book. And, mm -hmm. you know, like, I have two books of poetry published and it was like, you know, certain events in my life had to happen that, you know, the way I coped was with writing poetry. And it's one of those things where if I hadn't started, I would have never known, you know. And so I think there's a lot of people out there who stay in their comfort zone and not just creatively with everything, but especially even with creativity, people who can't draw or, you know, have never done it or are scared to start. They're like, well, it's just going to be bad and I can't improve and. I mean, I've seen people who can't do artwork at all create awesome and, and amazing stuff, you know, and maybe it's a talent that needed to be trained. Maybe it's a talent you just didn't know you have, you know, like the first time I know my parents were like, come fourth or fifth grade, they're like, you need to play a sport. And I was like, OK, I'd like to play hockey. And they said, no. And I was like, why? I really like to play hockey. You, got, you said I had to play a sport. Why can't I play hockey? They're like, it's too dangerous. You'll die. It's expensive. Blah, blah, blah. They signed me up for lacrosse and I'm here like, okay, so, so you're telling me lacrosse isn't dangerous or expensive. We still have to buy all this equipment. It's still dangerous. Well, I, they, they signed me up four days too late for the deadline or something. So they're like, all right, you're going to be an instrument kid now. And I was like, oh, okay. So I went from being a hockey player wannabe to a band kid, but they're like, what instrument do you want to play? And it's funny. I was just writing about this in my memoir that, I hate my parents always did this. They would ask questions, but they already have answers set up. So yeah, yeah. what instrument do you want to play? Well, I'd like to learn guitar. No, too common. Pick something different. Well, maybe piano be classic gentleman. No, no, you're not allowed to do that either. I was like, well, okay. What and they're like, yeah. So I ended up becoming a violinist for a while. Um, I don't remember if that was just the only option left for me or if that was voluntold, but it's like, why are you gonna ask me? Don't ask me what sport or instrument I want to play or do. Yeah, if I, yeah. Preset it with, hey, you're going to be an instrument kid. By the way, uh, you, you're choosing from this select few. Don't set it up to all instruments and then be like, no, 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 no. Um, yeah. And when I went to play the violin, I, I was amazing at it. You know, they, they, they called me a prodigy and I ended up putting it down a couple of years ago. But I had never played before and it was just something I connected with. Um, and so many of us don't even try instruments nowadays. Yeah. We just do everything online. I'm like, you never know. I've seen people just pick up a guitar and it's like, wow, you're amazing. They're like, I've never played before. I think too many people are in their comfort box. And I think as we get condensed into these little boxes we have, you know, pointing at this Zoom box, as we get, you know, wrapped into like at two years old, kids are on iPads. They're not discovering stuff. No. They're not exploring stuff. They're not doing stuff with their hands, especially. They're not, you know, they're... Maybe they're doing art on their iPad. I doubt it. And I think as 
parents and uh, of the newer generations re really need to foster creativity. And I think with AI, a lot of people are, the younger people are losing interest. Like, why would I become an artist? Why would I do this? I'll just have the AI do it for me. I think yeah, it's so exactly. important that we still foster those skills and work on them. I, I, why just throw everything away to the robots? That's that's letting them win. You know, yeah. we don't have to resist them and fight them and hate them, but we can still have our own creative endeavors. It doesn't take away from who we are. Yeah. And, and like I said, it, it's so important that the, I, I ran a restaurant there a while back and the, a lot of young couples would come in fine young man and a fine young woman. They're sitting across from each other. None of them are talking. Both of them are on the phone. phone. <laughs> and it's like, you know, I, you come around with the menus, you say, no, no, it's okay, I have it here. Everything was done on the phone. And wow. they're missing that connection between each other. And, and like you said, the creativity part of it, so important is that we use our creativity and we encourage it and develop it. Right. And because this is what makes us grow when, as, as human beings, that's that's what we're here for. We're here to grow, to experience life and, and to create. We are part of the creation. Amen. We are creators. And it's our God-given right to create. And then the, we have that power to create a better humanity for everybody. All right. And I mean, AI is great. It, it, it's great as a tool to help us to, to be better and to grow better. But fundamentally, we got to use what's in here, and to 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 stretch yep. ourselves and to push ourselves to use what what we already have, what God has given us, to develop and to bring forth. And and it's like you said, it's sad to see so many young people, babies even, oh, I mean, not All as right. far as babies, but young kids, to keep them quiet, there there they got the phone, and it, it's um. You can understand busy parents. Both parents are busy, and they're they're tied up with with all sorts of drama i suppose and and uh, right. you know they got these bills and those bills and all sorts of things running at them and it's probably easier to give them a phone to keep them distracted rather than to, to interact with them uh but it's it's definitely going to be a very interesting time when these people are young adults it's the world going to look like that you know i don't know uh, <laughs> sometimes i don't want to be alive for that <laughs> you know yeah. it's like so I, I hope I might add to be cleanup crew for that. <laughs> you know, I think, I think yeah, that's going to exactly. be. <laughs> yeah. You know, because it, 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 somebody has said that the, I think it was Greg Braden that was talking about if, you know, if the end of the world, if we did have that sort of scenario now, if there was a big flood or a major earthquake where there was problem with the, the food source, most people are going to, most people in the West are going to die from starvation because they don't have the tools or the skills or the know-how or the ability to use what's in here because everything's so used to, you know, what's on the phone, you know, looking right. up Mr. Google for for the for the <laughs> uh, for the, the 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 answer. And and when that's yeah. no longer there, but who are they gonna who are they gonna ask then, you know? But it's funny in the military we call him Chief Google. We'll be like, ask Chief in <laughs> Chief Google, <laughs> you know, go ask Chief. Um, but you're right agricultural skills you know home ec skills all that stuff is is yeah. going away and i'm not bashing on the door you know box food delivery systems but a lot of people don't even uh cook on their own nowadays they get like yeah. blue ribbon or um blue bunny whatever those those companies are and again i'm not knocking them like if you get that that's fine but it's like a lot of people get these pre-made meals and just heat them up from like fit factor or whatever it is and People don't know how to cook, you know, that they, they, they know how to follow this little box, put everything together and do the basic stuff, but they don't explore recipes on their own and stuff. So like you said, in agriculture, I mean, that's getting such a smaller and smaller field. So if they're, like you said, if we had to fend for ourselves, people aren't going to know the first thing about farming or home ec or any of that stuff. Yeah, a, a, a lot of people, I, I know, I remember seeing a, a study done, it was an interview, and they were asking these young children, where does the milk come from? And they said, oh, we get it from the milkman or the box. They, they don't associate the milk with the cow or huh. or the piece of meat with, with an animal. And that it, it's before I got into the shop, it was walking around eating grass and doing whatnot. Wow. Um, it, it, that's, that's sad when people don't know where their food is coming from. Or And, and like you said, about so much things out there that's called food, it's not food. <laughs> yeah it's not food at all 
it, it, it's got no business right. being there. Um, it's full of all sorts of things, ingredients that I've never heard about before and that you can't find. In the right, shop. right. And, and you, know, you know, it's, you bring up also just the amount of misinformation online and yeah. just the gullibility of the younger generations. In fact, we covered it on my show. These kids were arguing with uh, my one guest that Balboa was the greatest fighter in history and that he was a real person and that those movies were real. <laughs> they were like documentaries. Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. um, and, that's just an example. And I know I actually got tricked by an AI video the other day of this eight foot long centipede uh, that they said, like, first time in hundreds of years has appeared in Mexico. And luckily, people in the comments saved me. It was an AI generated video, but it looked so real. And I, you know, I had no reason not to believe that an eight foot bug crawled out of somewhere in Mexico. I mean, they've got some creatures down there, but uh, that's how easy it is. And, you know, sometimes these AI generated videos of people, it could be you or me even out there yeah. AI generated. And I'm like, wow, they, they copied my voice. They, you know, they copied all my hand gestures. And now, now it's me yeah, it's saying cool. something totally wild that I shouldn't be saying. And it, it happens every day with all these clips, especially uh, of presidents and political figures. It's like, that that this is the worst because I need to know what they're actually saying. These are the people who are going to run our country and make decisions, and I don't know if they're saying this or that. And you know, so it's it's a world of, of misinformation. No one's seeking the right information. No one's fact checking information. It's just we we see, we believe, we do. You know, like you said, relating it back to food, it's like this is organic, um, and it just because it says it, they don't even read the nutrition label. You know, it could like you said have some giant long 10 consonants in a row kind of <laughs> word on the back and you're like what is yeah, this yeah. it's even yeah, a real yeah. thing yeah yeah they said that's I, it's been it's been wonderful talking to you and you know fair play to you for you you're on the right road and it's like you said when you connect with your god and, and you come from that place um uh, you know that becomes your moral compass and you have that so congratulations on that and, and well done Thank for you. for um, for a young man who's putting himself out there and making good for not just yourself but for everybody else, your community, and for everybody else in your way, and you know, to make this a better world. So, I congratulate you on that. And is there any final words that you'd, you'd like to leave our listeners with? Just, just a shameless plug, you know, to check out my shows, Couple of Nukes and Radiating yeah. Faith. They're available almost anywhere you get your podcasts, they're available on YouTube. Try and grow my Instagram, couple of nukes. I'm also on Facebook, which is how, you know, Mr. Declan here and I connected. So Mark Whiskey, Mr. Whiskey wasn't allowed to do the Facebook's rule. So Mark Whiskey, if you want to have me on, on your show or, or vice versa. And everyone, I encourage everyone to apply to be on my show and just email me couple of nukes at gmail.com. So that's couple OF because you can't have an apostrophe in the middle of an email. So couple of nukes at gmail.com. Or using Buzzsprout's new fan mail service, just send me a message and say, hey, I'd like to be on the show. Or if you have a certain topic for us to cover. But if you go to any of my episodes, whether it's on YouTube or the podcast, uh, there will be a link to my website. And that will have everything you need to know or want to know. Or even stuff you didn't know you wanted to know. So, <laughs> Mr. Declan, thank you so much for having me. It, it, this was amazing.